Life is a series of starting over. It's an opportunity to constantly reinvent yourself. We've all done this. Think about the time when you were in elementary school and you moved on to high school. New schedule, new building, new teachers, new excitement. We're all very, very pumped up because now we're in high school. By the time you leave high school, you feel like you know it all. You've got the answers to life, love, what you need to do with your life, what precautions to look out for. But once we get to college, we're again reinventing ourselves. It's the unknown. We don't know who we are yet. We're very close, though. Uh, we're looking for new opportunities. We're figuring out schedules. We're figuring out what we're going to do with our life. When we're there, it's the anticipation of what is and what is yet to be. For people like me in the year 1862, that was certainly not the case. That was two years before the Civil War ended and before enslaved people were freed through our Emancipation Proclamation. But for a group of people in a town called Mitchellville, they had the opportunity for citizenship and freedom. Let me give you some historical context. In 1861, as the Union soldiers moved south, they knew that they had to strengthen the southern ports as well as establish a supply station somewhere on the southeast coast of the United States, ideally between Savannah and Charleston. Port Royal Sound was an ideal target for, for the Union soldiers. It was guarded at, on um, Phillips Island by Fort Beauregard and on Hilton Head Island by Fort Walker. On November 7th, 1861, the Union soldiers secured Port Royal Sound and Hilton Head Island was officially proclaimed the South, the Department of the South. That very next day, about 80 formerly enslaved people showed up on Hilton Head Island. By the end of the month, there were 400 formerly enslaved people on this island. There were so many, and they were coming so fast, so quickly, that the Union soldiers didn't know exactly what to do. They weren't slaves, but yet they weren't formally freed. So they were entitled with the label, the label contraband of war. If we fast forward to the fall of 1862, a Major General Ormsby Mitchell came to command the soldiers on Hilton Head Island. By that time, there were 30 to 40,000 soldiers at Fort Walker, <clears throat> in addition to over 400 slaves, all sharing the same community, the same barracks. Ormsby Mitchell was appalled. He was appalled. So he declared that north of the Union encampment on what was Fish Hall Creek Plantation, he would create a village, a town of sorts. He did it for two reasons. Naturally, he wanted to alleviate the overcrowding at the fort. But secondly, because he was a dreamer of what could be, he wanted these people, these newly freed individuals, to have some autonomy. This was an opportunity of reinvention. This was an opportunity for these people to prove that they could sustain themselves, educate themselves, and govern themselves. Remember, these were the same individuals on whose back this country was built on. Many of the former slaves could read and write. They had skills. They were blacksmiths. They were carpenters. They were cooks. They were caretakers. They were seamstresses. They were herbalists, or the early doctors of the time. 
General Mitchell gave them building materials and said, I'd like you to formulate your own place to live, your own village. This is a sample of the first homes in Mitchellville that were designed and created by these former slaves. To honor General Mitchell's legacy, the town was called Mitchellville because again, he gave them an opportunity of reinvention, an opportunity for freedom, and an opportunity for citizenship. This was the first time the term freedmen were used to describe these people. Mitchellville was established in 1862. Here are the first residents of the town, or some of the first residents of the town. Mitchellville is the Shows, speaks to the value of the opportunity for citizenship, the opportunity we all have, the opportunity to work through the, our own hands, the opportunity to be given a fair wage for what we do, an opportunity to live within a community without fear, and, and the, the opportunity to be part of the electrical, the, the political system, not the electrical, but the political system. And then finally, the opportunity to be treated with dignity and respect. Mitchell knew that there was great interest in this what's called experiment here on Hilton Head Island. He knew that the White House was looking very closely at what was going on here. And he wanted to make sure that these newly freed men and women understood the issue of governance and how important it was to govern themselves. See, the freedmen were responsible not only for the building of this town, but also for governing this town. So some of the things they did was to establish the first tax laws. They established um, schools for both adults and children. They established property rights. They determined what sanitation systems they would use. They established on Hilton Head Island the first town council, the first mayor, and other elected officials. The legacy of Mitchellville is the fact that in Mitchellville was the first law for compulsory education in South Carolina. You see, every child between 16 and 15 years of age had to attend school. If they did not, their parents broke the law. Remember that parents in the audience. <laughs> Mitchellville also speaks to the dream that the founders had, the people that did the Declaration of Independence, the philosophy, the importance of equality, the rights that we all have in America today. America failed at that promise long ago. Mitchellville was an opportunity for America to live up to the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Harriet Tubman spent months on, on, at Mitchellville. You see, Ms. Tuz Tubman was, the, was a spy for the Department of the South. And so she worked from Mitchellville. She also told any person that could get, any freed slave that could get to Hilton Head Island had a choice. They could remain in Mitchellville or they, she would conduct them north through her underground railroad. That is why at its height, Mitchellville had 1,500 residents. At the end of the Civil War, these people who, were, who had been residents of Mitchellville made decisions. Either they stayed south, but many of them decided to go north. And as a result, today, over half of all African Americans in the United States have roots in the town of Mitchellville. Yeah, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Not only African Americans, but you need to think about the people who the Union soldiers that were here, 
during the Civil War. Their roots are also here. So this is not a story of courageous black people. <laughs> this is an American story that is the foundation of what our country is today. I just want to let that seek in a bit. The value of Mitch's, and, and, and in, in my opinion, and I have to say this, in my opinion, I think that Mitchellville really speaks to the opportunity, the basis of citizenship when given opportunity. Opportunity is so important for all of us to have the right to be everything we can be in this life. I want to leave you, I, wanna, I want you to visit Mitchellville. Mitchellville is physically here today. Many people don't know that. I'm on a board that is bringing that village back to life. So I want you to go on the site of historic Mitchellville, exploremitchellville.com, and learn more about your story. I would like for you to put your feet on the ground of Mitchellville and maybe get a feel for that perseverance, for that hope, for the tears that those early Americans shared on this island of Hilton Head, which to me is a very fascinating thing. I want to leave you with one of my favorite quotes that speaks to everything we talked about. And this is from Maya Angelou, who talks about life's mission is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do, work, to do so with some passion, compassion, some humor, and have some style about it, too, while you're at it. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to you mothers that are here.